Okay, so what we've got here is an Excel sheet I've started to help with our recipe costing. In our first cell, which we call A1, we have the word topic name. So in B1, you're going to put the name of your recipe, and I'm making a chopped chip slice today. In cell A3, we have the term ingredient. So down in this A column is where you're going to list all of your ingredients. In the B column, which is purchase quantity in grams, this is how you actually buy the packet. So you need to work out um, in grams or mils what size the packet is that you actually buy. And in the column C, it will be the cost of what you buy. So these first three things are how you buy the ingredient from the shop. Once we get over to column D, this is where we have to work out in grams or mils the quantity that we need for the recipe, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. And then we will program our Excel sheet to calculate the cost of that ingredient. So before I start adding in all my ingredients, I'm just going to bold all of these at the top because we know that they are our headings. Okay, for our recipe now, just to give you an example, my first ingredient that I'm going to use is butter. And I buy butter in those blocks, which is 500 grams. No need to write grams here, otherwise we'll have too much trouble trying to calculate. And the cost of that 500 gram block is $1.39. Same thing here, no dollar signs, just numbers. And I know that the amount that I need for my recipe is 250 grams. Okay, so what you'll continue to do is put all of your ingredients in, how you buy them, and the cost of buying them, and then the amount that you need for your recipe. So what I've done is I've filled in all of the ingredients down in column A, the amount that I buy them in, the cost, and then the quantity that I need for the recipe. Now what I've had to do for some of the things like bicarb soda and mixed spice, which are here, is I've had to actually weigh the ingredients because I knew I needed a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. So I actually measured out half a teaspoon and then weighed it to give me the amount in grams. So now that we have all that in, it's time to add a little formula so that your Excel sheet can calculate the cost of all the ingredients in one go. So when we're calculating the cost of the ingredients, what we're actually doing is dividing the amount that we need for the recipe by the amount that we bought it in. So that is column D we're putting over top of column B. So that'll give us a fraction of what we've bought and then we're going to times it by the cost. So to do that, we always start our calculations with an equals. And what we are going to do is we actually want this cell D4 to divide. So we have D4 divided by B4. And as you see, as I've clicked on those, it's actually just gone in. Otherwise, you can just type them, D4 divided by B4. And then we want to times it. So that's our little asterisk. And we want to times it by C4, which is the cost. Okay, and then we just press Enter. Once we've done that, it tells us in this first column that the butter to buy, we needed half a block of butter and it was going to cost 69.5 cents or closer to 70 cents. Now we don't have to do that calculation for all of them because we can actually copy the formula down. And you do that by holding the left key and then dragging on the box and it actually copies all the way down. And you'll see that the cost of the ingredients is now filled down just like that in our Excel sheet. So the last thing I'm now going to do is work out a total of how much the whole recipe cost. So to do that, what we're going to do is add all of these numbers up. Now it's okay at the minute that there are more than two decimal places. We'll fix it up in a second. So the way that we add, we can go equals. Um, there's a couple of different ways, but what we're doing is we're getting the sum. So that's adding. And we're getting the sum of E4 all the way down to just a minute long, E13. So what that does is it adds all of the numbers between E4 and E13 and press enter. So we've come up with a cost of $9.1338. Now what we can do is we can actually go up to home and we can round that off 
so we can make it to two def decimal places. So that'll give us a total cost of our recipe being $9.13. So our total of $9.13 is actually quite a lot cheaper than our $30.33. So that's why we work out costings because it gives us an indication of how much things are um, per recipe. Now if we wanted to find out how much it would cost per serve, I'll um, just put in another column here, and I know with this choc chip recipe, and I might actually add it in at the top here, um, if it serves, has 12 serves in it. So to work out our serves, it's just a simple calculation again where you're going equals, and we want to have our total, which in this case is in cell E15, and we want to divide that by 12 serves, and that'll give us a cost per serve. So we can see here, we're at 76 cents, and I'll just change that to two decimal places. So it costs us 76 cents for 12 people to each have a piece of this chopped chip slice. And you can see where this would come in handy when you are actually um, catering for people and you want to work out how much it costs per person to serve something. The last thing you might want to do is just neaten up your columns. So you can highlight these. You can get them to be central if you want to do that. If you do that for one lot of numbers, make sure you do that for all so that it's nice and neat. Um, you might want to change the width of your column, but what you're going to end up with and what you will actually hand in as part of your assessment will be a table that's actually quite neat and tidy with everything central so that we can read it. And now, done.